All right, in this fourth episode of our 3D compositing tutorial series, we're going to be doing some more orientation with our car and get it into the position and scale that we want for our final render. So I've got the tutorial project pulled up here right where we left off, and as you can see, there's some major scaling issues going on right now. So we need to go ahead and fix that. Now I could go ahead and scale the car down, but the car is already accurately scaled because each of these cubes are one meter, so that's about you know, two and a half or three meters wide. So that's pretty accurate for this type of car. So that means our camera scale is off. So we're gonna go back into motion tracking tab here and we could go ahead and select our two points again, change the scale to something higher, hit set scale, go back, check it, see if it's any better. Um, but a much better way to do it is in motion tracking is to pull down this top window that we were using as a graph. Go ahead and pull that down and we're gonna change this into our 3D viewport. And now I can go ahead and select the camera if you're not already in that. And now we can see our scale effect as we do it. So if we go ahead and scroll down and change the scale to say five meters and hit set scale, we can instantly see what that looks like. So for this, I think I ended up with a 5.5 meters. I think that's what looked good to me. Let's see. Yeah, 5.0. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now our scale is set up so we can go back to layout in our 3D view. And I want to go ahead and move this car around so it's, you know, kind of in the center of the driveway um, so it looks right with the scene. And this doesn't look that bad, but it could look a lot better. So um, what I want to do is go ahead and move the car. Now, I can't just select the part of the car and hit G, which is move and blender and just move it around because uh, obviously it's only one part of that car. So I could go in, hit B, and then try to select all the parts of the car, and that might work, but a better way to do it is to go ahead and go into that car collection that we made earlier, right click it, and click select objects. That will select all the objects in that collection, and now we can go ahead and move them all around together. If, by the way, if you wanna cancel a movement, just hit escape, and it will cancel, or you can hit right click and it will also cancel. All right, so now I wanna go ahead and move this car. Now, a couple different ways you can do this. One way is to hit G, and I don't wanna move it vertically at all, so if I only wanna move it on the X and Y, I can hit X and I wanna move it on just X or Y for just Y, but if I only wanna move it on both those axes and not Z, I can hit Shift Z, or Z, I'm not Australian, I don't think. If you hit Shift Z, you can go ahead and move the car around in every axis but whatever axis you selected. So shift Y would move it in all axis but the uh, Y, which obviously is not what we want. So if we hit shift D, it will move it on just the ground plane. So that is actually a pretty good way to do things. But what I like to do is go ahead and split my windows by going up to the top right and dragging to the left when you get the crosshairs. And then on the right window, I like to go into the top down view. And this way I can sort of select the top down when I'm, where I wanna move it. And on my left, I can see where it actually ends up. So something like that, I think would look good. And I can go through my timeline here and make sure that it's a good spot. I might go ahead and move that a little further back. Okay, this looks pretty good. You could leave it to that and go ahead and just move on to um, the next phase of the tutorial. But I like to add just a little extra bit of spice, if you will. Um, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rotate the tire so that it kind of looks like that it's in the middle of a turn, even though it's a straight road. But just rotating those tires a little bit makes it look a little more realistic because it's rare that you have a car sitting there with all the tires perfectly straight. So the front tires, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate them. Now, if I go on the Z axis here and hit R for rotate, and start rotating them, obviously that's problematic. Um, they're rotating uh, on the average axis between them, which is not good because that's not how car tires work. So uh, instead, what we wanna do is go up here and on this little um, link icon, I guess, go ahead and select that and then choose individual origins. That choose the pivot point. Um, and that will make the pivot point or rotational point of all the objects be the object's individual origin point rather than the average of them all combined. Basically, it'll make it turn properly. Yeah, I think I like it this way better. So, I'm not gonna turn it a whole lot, just a slight, slight, subtle turn there. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it at that. All right, so that's about it for orientation. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window and you're done. That was kind of a short tutorial, but in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at doing the texturing and uh, materials of the car, which will be super fun. I'm Josiah, thanks for watching. That's a wrap.